All right, so um, I know y'all can't see me. I have a camera stand and the only kind of way I can sit my phone where I can record this. You can't really see me, but it is what it is. I figured I'd make a video because I've been making videos pretty much every day now. Like I said, every day and it's only been two days, but I always uh, tone my canvases. Or if I get like a store-bought panel or something like that, I either tone it or give it like another coat of like a gesso. And I figured, oh, this would be cool to make, you know, make a video showing the panels. Uh, I'm actually going on a trip tomorrow. So I got a bunch of kind of five by seven panels, gesso board panels. I like these. Uh, I intend to use them with one of my newest kind of toys, I guess you could say. Uh, the pochade or pochade, however you want to say it, palette. It's this little kind of handheld deal. Uh, I actually need to clean it, but uh, you can kind of use a magnet, stick something on here. Like I, I tend to use like watercolor paper. So I'll take the paper and just tape it down and you can paint right on there. Uh, this side is metal. So it takes like a magnet. Yeah, there's paint on here, but I can scrape that off. It's no big deal. Um, but yeah, it's real cool. If you want one, pochepalette.com. I feel like it's weird to shout somebody out if you're not like Making like a sponsored video, and it's not no sponsored video. I just really like it. But yeah, so you got two options, right? So what I use is, and these are by all different brands. Doesn't really matter the brand, um, but a lead white, red earth. So the lead white is by Michael Harding. The red earth is by Old Holland. Um, and Mars Black by Williamsburg. Can you see that? Get it focused. There it is. The lead white is kind of a hassle to get out of the tube. Um, I use, I'm using the lead white because of just all the stuff I've read and heard about lead white adhering better to um, your oil paint adheres better with the lead or something like that. I could be wrong. You know how you hear stuff and you forget how you heard it. I don't know, but it was good stuff. And just because I have it and I wanted to, so I mean, if someone does have a reason why I shouldn't do that, I don't really care. Also, just put that out there. But, <laughs> Um, yeah, so you got two options. So with something like this, I would either say I want another coat of gesso on it. So I would do the same mixture, um, but I'd add some uh, ground marble dust. So you can get it in like real big bags. Pot of marble. Let's get a big bag. Pot of marble. Just get a big bag. Uh, put a little bit of that in there. Just to make it a little more absorbent. Which is fine, especially if you're working like in layers. Um, the first couple layers are sinking a lot, a lot more and then you can go ahead and start taking it on. Sometimes I do that, especially if I'm real unsure about something. Cause once they start sinking in, to me, it's a lot easier to uh, cover up the things I didn't like, if that makes sense. Rather than when it's like right on top. You don't really have to scrape it as much. I don't know if y'all have that same experience. Or I just do this mix and slide it onto the panel. So, Take the colors, 
put a little bit kind of in the middle because I have a lot of panels I'm about to do. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. I don't know if I'm going to paint on all of these while I'm gone. Hopefully I will. Use a little bit of each. Now you're about to see me struggle real quick, you know. This is like the fun part, the struggle with the lead white. Like I can make a whole series of me struggling, getting this white out of the tube. And once it starts coming out because uh, the way the particles are, it makes the paint a little more stringy. It just starts flowing out of the tube and it won't stop. I know for a while you couldn't find this for some reason. I think I just got lucky, so I bought it. And I'm sure there's somebody who would use this for like a much better purpose that didn't get it and was like, this bastard, you know? Once again, I don't care. Later. And this should also help it dry faster. Like the red earth doesn't dry super slow, but it does dry kind of slow. Relatively slow. That's another reason why I like using the lead white. It should make it dry a little bit faster. Black always dries slow. I don't know why. Maybe somebody knows. But black always dries really slow. Let me see how I'm not even squeezing the tube anymore. Let's see if you can see it. It's just really, nah, it must have stopped. It's like, it like bubbles out really slowly. You don't need much of it. There it is. Every time I take a little off, it bubbles back out. Now you need a palette knife. And you don't have to use these colors. Honestly, uh, sometimes I misplace things and can't find all the colors. So I just use red and like, I don't know, a darker color. So just maybe like a an umber. Or like if I'm feeling real jazzy, you know, uh, like a blue. I have this uh, indigo, and I have a Payne's Gray, so I might use one of those. Payne's Gray has black in it, just black and blue pretty much, so I could do that. And I don't know where my palette knife is, because I tend to misplace things sometimes. Oh, this will work. So I always, the white's real hard. You see this? It doesn't really move. Like it's so stiff. So what I tend to do, and this is where I would also add in the chalk. And I think I'm going to add a little bit so I could just kind of show. Take a little chalk, add a little linseed oil to it. And then from there, start feeding in your paint colors. And anybody who's ever like just made their own ground, that's just generally how you would make a ground. You know, make a, a gesso ground. So, uh, or not a gesso, not quite gesso. Gesso would have like animal glue in it, but that's just how you would make a oil ground to kind of put as your surface. Or you can also kind of use this to like extend some of your paint, you know. You'll see it makes kind of like a weird paste. Add a little messy to it. Let 
but you're gonna see this is very like minimal. Like there was almost no honesty, truthfully speaking. There was almost no point in me adding any chalk to it. Except for I just wanted to do it to show. But it's very minimal. Just because of how little amount of chalk I, I put down there. And this is about to get spread across what nine panels. So add a little linseed oil. This is just regular gambling linseed oil. Start mixing it up. And this is the fun part because it takes a second. Pretty sure I can make this go a little faster. Hold up. Okay, so the whole get that down. It wasn't enough to make the paste I was talking about. It started off pasty, but now it's a little runny, which is cool. Uh, so from here, all you really have to do is uh, feed your paint in. <coughs> so start with like small amounts. Like maybe, there's already a little white in there. Dab a little bit of red, a little bit of black, maybe a little more red. Start mixing it up, see what it looks like. Uh, so most of everything that I've kind of learned about painting, I learned from, like I watch a lot of YouTube videos like everybody else. Um, but I also, I'm a little hard headed, so I don't like listening to any step by step tutorials. There's very few that I would watch. There's this one dude uh, who used to study with I uh, nerd him. and I watch his a lot. And I was like, "Oh, that's cool," you know. Um, when I saw one of their videos, it made me want to try out this kind of pinkish color. But I don't really go for a pink. It's more of a It's still more of a, like a muted red rather than, say, on the edge of a pink, I guess I could say. Or sometimes I'll do like a purple. Um, but just like anyone else who would do this, I kind of go for like a middle value-ish color. Or maybe a little darker. The whole idea I go with, um, just because i kind of been piecing together ways of how to paint from watching other people paint like mutant time lapses and like not listening to any of the words uh or like tuning them out and just you know seeing what they do and how the picture emerges looking at books books are like the best way so i have a few different books of like sculptors painters even pop artists and i don't even make like pop art but just kind of trying to get an idea of how they made the picture emerge. I want to look for a color that I think I can rationalize making a picture emerge from. And I go from there. So like, hmm, I can show an example. One second. All right. Now, of course, I will show my like two favorites. And it's starting to sink, so it's real dry. You can't really see it as well. And the light's, like, making a glare. But I only had to paint so much of this because of the ground color. And um, the idea was that, okay, I only really need to place some light spots, a few dark accents, maybe a little, you know, hint of really warm spots here and there and I could just use gray to cool down certain areas and this picture should emerge and if you watch the time lapse you can kind of see it emerge but there's a lot of parts on here that aren't even painted but it kind of gets filled in you know uh, and that was with that reddish like dark 
brownish red kind of color. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, for this one, it was green. Uh, and I painted a lot more of this one because there's so many layers. So you can't really, you know, I guess this is kind of a, not the best example. But the same idea kind of worked here, you know. Um, eventually, I kicked on like so much paint. It covered up a lot of those areas, but there's large portions that the gray tone is only there because, um, and especially in like shadow transitions, those gray tones are there because I just kind of started laying, layering some red over that green and it kind of excluded parts that I needed to paint so much on, you know, and paint's expensive. So conserve your paint, you know. All right, I'm drinking coffee right now. Everybody likes coffee. And this is a really cool coffee cup to have. Okay, so yeah, conserve your paint. Try to be a little more economical with your, I wouldn't say economical with the brush stroke, like use a lot of paint, but when you're placing it, Dab a little bit, see if it fits that spot. Take your like, you have like these five handy painting tools like here and like drag it around a little bit. See if when you drag it to the spot adjacent to it that might be transitioning, does it make more sense to keep going that direction even though that kind of uh, gray that gets made from smudging that paint, right? That kind of smudge, that gray transition. If that gray works there, why would you keep going that direction trying to add thicker paint there? You already painted that, like, without even trying to, you know? So go back the other way and start adding on more to the lights, you know? Um, if your lights don't seem to pop enough, maybe look right after that great transition you just made and see if, hmm, okay, I'm transitioning to the dark area. Where's the darkest dark on this side? Go to that area and just make that darker. Don't try to paint into the gray. Don't try to add like a chunk of white on top. Just fuck Ooh, I wasn't supposed to curse. Whoops. Just like darken that area up. And then boom, you solved your problems with like very little effort, you know. I guess I kind of try to think of like the quickest and like the least laborious way I could do it, like physically, because I never have much time to paint. But um, I guess it's not as laborious physically as it is mentally, but that's okay, you know, save a little time. All right, I'm going to finish mixing this and speed this up. Because it's a little <laughs> runnier than I'm used to. Because I usually do it with more chalk. But I didn't need, need it really. I just wanted to add it in there. Uh, but it's kind of like this lower middle tone kind of cool pink. If that makes sense. Or like a cool red. And I like that color. So, the next step is you literally just take a brush or a powder knife, whatever you want, and rub it on there. Most times, 
since I'm, for the most part, just toning these, I'll take this and thin it down even more so it dries faster because I should have did this yesterday because I need them for tomorrow to pack. But I don't really care. It should dry enough. It should sink in and dry enough to be able to, you know, pack up overnight. Um, yeah, let's take a brush. And you can kind of see what toner I normally use, but right there, it's pretty close ish once you thin it down. Yeah, let's take a brush, brush it on. And yeah, that's it. I'll talk about it a little more once I finish. Let's go. Okay, all done. Uh, so here are the smaller ones. They just need to dry. Here's one of the larger ones. They also need to dry. Uh, a lot of people actually like to take a paper towel and kind of wipe away what they put down to leave this kind of smoky look and I'll show you a copper panel I kind of did that with so right here I actually started painting some and I didn't like it and I wiped it away but that tone right here I did that with I don't like that, so it's kind of one of those things like, yeah, there are ways people say you should do this or how to do this. They're really kind of telling you like how they do it, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's like the best way to do it. Maybe they're trying to make sure uh, the paint film at the bottom is a lot thinner, but in my opinion and uh, that's kind of what matters to me right now. Uh, uh, but in my opinion, uh, I like the, this look a lot better. Uh, it's a lot easier to use within your painting because it's more opaque. And yes, I added linseed oil, whatever. Uh, but I also thinned it down. I pretty much always thin it down a little bit, just not that much. Uh, for how much paint pigment that's why in my opinion like if you use higher quality paints you can almost uh, minimize a lot of the issues you have with uh, worrying about your paint film I mean obviously do it correctly like um, don't go and try to say just use a, a whole bunch of linseed oil right at the start of your painting and then go on with pure paint right after. No. I used a fast drying pigment, uh, the lead white. Um, I don't know if you saw, I'll just, I, I ran out of the lead white because I've made a mistake and like overload it with the uh, red. And I always tend to underestimate the tint power of Mars Black. But happens um, so I added a little titanium white but it's uh, also a fast drying titanium white um, when you when you start off because the pigment to oil ratio is so huge in most high quality paints um, you also are not dealing with paint that is primarily oil and powder, kind of like we just made, right? Like uh, in the beginning. So 
it's not, you're not, I don't even know how to say this. In my opinion, you're running a less of a chance of ending up with less oil, with more oil on your lower layer because, you know, most of your, like, you should feel these pigments, like, especially the Williamsburg, like, they're, like, stiff. Like, every Williamsburg paint I get is stiff, and that's because there's so much pigment in there. Um, the Michael Harding and Old Holland, they also have a really high pigment load. Not as stiff, um, but... There's a lot of pigment in there, so I just added a little bit of linseed oil, not much, just enough to get it moving and thin it down the rest of the way. Kind of like a, I'd say like a, if I were to take the oil to, and I use, uh, what is that, Gamsol or something? Because I used turpentine in the house once and that was a bad idea, so don't do that. Uh, but I want to say it was probably like, Maybe 30% linseed oil, 40% linseed oil, more than likely, and uh, the rest of the way Gamsol, because that brush, that gesso brush soaks up a lot of water. Um, at worst case scenario, it's a 50-50 mix, and I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, so that's how I do that. If I had more time, I'd probably take, I would probably make that layer a little bit thinner and then I add another coat with maybe another color. So like, just to make it dance a little bit, you know, uh, but that's up to you. I don't, I don't mind this, this should work for me. If there's any painting I do over this, uh, you know, a couple weeks trip I do where I want to take my time with it, then whatever other color I'd use. I'll draw with that color, make an underpainting, um, like a quasi kind of underpainting type deal, and fill in all my shadows with that, you know, whatever color would opti optically mix, you know. And yeah, I'll use that and go from there. And then, like I said, try to make it emerge from the ground. In a sense, I guess, if you were to think philosophically, this is, a, you know, a lot of the painting process kind of sounds like um, Genesis, you know, but I'm not going to get into that. I love that talk. But thanks for coming. Even though you didn't ask for me to make this, I just decided I wanted to do this. Peace.